Bob Fung Lee from the Department of Anesthesia at University of Pennsylvania. I'm the inventor of the V Nasal Jet Tube and V Jet Angel Tracker Tube. This two airway device provides superglottic jet oxygenation and ventilation for patients who have respiratory depression, such as urine propofol, uh, intravenous propofol infusion, and all kind of uh, reasons that cause patient respiratory depression. The we need jet tube has a jet port holding the distal end with the blue color and another port open in the middle that connect to CO2 and to monitor patient breathing. The V-Jet Angel Tracker Tube also has a jet port built on posterior wall and open at distal end. And there's also a carbon dioxide monitor catheter that can connect to the uh, CO2 monitoring and monitor patient breathing. So when we use we need to jet tube, we first measure from ear to nose the distance and insert this tube into that mark. This at most of time is the proper position. But you can move it out or in a little bit to get the most adequate position judged by the connecting to a jet ventilator and do a jet, do superglottic jet and watching the chest rising and watch the CO2 value. If you don't have a jet ventilator, and you can also use bamboo bath and do or the any season machine, breathing circuit and do ventilation. Now, if patient has a liver problem, has a bleeding issue, then you don't want to put this into patient nose, and you can put this jet nasal tube into patient mouth and connect to a jet ventilator, the blue one, and do superglottic jet <laughs> oxygenation and ventilation. Of course, you can also use breathing circuit or an bull bag to give patient oxygenation and ventilation. Now, if you have a difficult air, so after you put down the mask, and you can do this, to superglottic jet oxygenation ventilation via this jet nasal tube. So when you do the direct laryngoscopy, um, you can use the jet and the tracker tube which connect to a jet ventilator and if you only see the only epiglottide that could create three view you just put this distal end under the epiglottide and align this with the patient's body midline and do a superglottic jet oxygenation and observe the chest rising observe the CO2 through the CO2 monitor catheter and observing the uh, the jet sound. If it's jet not into the trachea, it will have a turbulent sound. If it's jet into the trachea, there's no turbulent sound. And by this, then you can direct the distal end of the jet ending trachea tube just above vocal cord. Then, then you put this anti co 2 monitor catheters through vocal cord into trachea. And after that, you just slide in this endotracheal tube into the trachea because you have a guiding catheter there. So during the difficult ARV management, you have been giving patient oxygen all the time. You never stop giving patient oxygen. That will minimize the chance of hypoxemia during difficult ARV and minimize the morbidity and mortality. Uh, that's compared to the tranquil jet, ventilation TTJV, the tranquil jet, tranquil jet ventilation is often used too late, high failure rate, 64%, and higher complication, 
the barotoma rate more than 10%. So this superglottic jet oxygenation either through jet nasal tube or jet endotracheal tube will give the oxygen much earlier and non-invasive and like a fire extinguisher. So when the fire just started, it's easy to put it out. And uh, for this, when you see a difficult airway, you give oxygen first, then manipulate airway. So that will improve patient safety. Thank you.